I call to order the Gladstone City Council work session for March 22nd, 2022. It's 5.30 p.m. This meeting will be conducted using the Zoom platform. The Zoom access instructions can be found on the meeting agenda. Members of the City Council, staff and the public all have access to this meeting. The work session is a time for the Council and staff to discuss matters openly and informally, and public comment is not part of our agenda and is not allowed. Attendees will not be able to speak during this work session. We will not have a consent agenda, business from the audience, nor business from the council. The only item to be discussed tonight is the Unified Sports User Fee Subcommittee recommendations. Tammy, could you please call the roll? Councillor Ripley. Yes. Councillor Alexander. Yes. Councillor Tracy. Here. Councillor Hartman. Here. Councillor Todd. Here. Councillor Garlington. Here. Mayor Stemple. Here. Can everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So item one is City Administrator Betts and Public Works Director Darren Canaparoli will update the City Council on the Unified Sports User Fee Subcommittee's recommendations for sports activity at Meldrum Bar Park, Derrick's Field, and Max Patterson Courts. Staff. Thank you, Mayor Stemple. Good evening, City Council. Yes, the Public Works Director Darren Canaparoli and I wanted to update you since the last time that we have talked about sports user fees at a city council meeting, we um, put together a unified sports subcommittee. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and have Darren just kind of highlight some areas in the staff report. And then we could talk a little bit about what their recommendations were. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, in September of 2017, the city council approved city of council approved the Gladstone citywide parks master plan. This plan included implement implementation of park utility fees to facilitate funding for ongoing park operations and maintenance. In 2019, the Gladstone Park and Recreation Advisory Board began discussion regarding updating and implementing park user fees. The discussion included parking fees and user fees. In October of 2019, members of the Gladstone Youth Association attended the Park and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to discuss and receive feedback regarding user fees. In January of 2020, it was determined that the city would begin implementing the current park user fees for any and all users, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the parks were closed and youth associations were unable to schedule and utilize city parks, therefore no fees were implemented. In June of 2021, staff completed a survey of park user fees for surrounding areas, including the cities of Oregon City, Happy Valley, West Lynn, and the North Clackamas Park and Rec District, as well as field locations based on user group groups, game schedules for fee comparison. On July 12, 2021, staff brought this matter back to the Parks Board as requested by city council. In accordance with the staff recommendation, the parks, parks board voted to hold off on a, assessing field and court usage fees until after the completion of Meldrum Bar Park site plan. Following the direction of city council and the parks board, city staff worked to further the discussion regarding user fees for both fields and courts on the basis of reserved play. The Unified Sports User Group, which included Councillor Greg Alexander, Councillor Anessa Hartman, and Councillor Tracy Todd, Parks, board, Parks and Recreation Board member Stephanie Phipps, and Parks and Recreation Board member Nancy Turner, city staff, baseball, softball, soccer, and pickleball. Productive meetings have allowed for thorough discussions on the matter of user fees and resolution to the parking concerns for user groups at Meldrum Bar Park. The user groups will be will provide city staff with seasonal rosters. The city will charge fees in accordance with the attached uh, fee schedule. The city will provide a designated free parking area, which is outlined in the attached map referred to as Exhibit B. 
The designed area will allow visiting teams to park free of charge while they are watching current games at Meldrum Bar Park. Since 2017, the city of Gladstone has been tasked with researching new revenue so options for maintaining and enhancing our park system. Participants of the Unified Sports User Group agree that this is a way to put a fair and equitable fee in place for reserved use of city owned fields and courts. The city acknowledges that the fee will not offset the substantial maintenance cost associated with the fields and courts, but feel recovering a portion of this cost is financially responsible. Thank you, Darren. I guess just to kind of summarize is the subcommittee meetings were very productive and it was great that all of the users came together and offered input. But what we realized through this process is that it wasn't really about the sports user fees. It was about the parking fee at Meldrum Bar Park. And I know that we have a division on our city council on that issue. And so one of the things as we engage in a discussion that I just wanna remind the city council and the audience about is the points to emphasize about the parking fee. So the city owns and maintains Meldrum Bar Park. It's an 87 acre park with ballparks and a boat ramp on the river. People from around the region use the park but park operation, maintenance, and services rely on funding from the Gladstone taxpayers. With the new parking fee, everyone who uses the park can help. The fee is paid by visitors from outside Gladstone that park a vehicle at Meldrum Bar Park. The residents receive a free annual pass because they pay property taxes and a percentage is attributed to the parks system. And the main objective is to generate revenue from those outside Gladstone city limits that utilize city parks. So just kind of summarizing those points about why the city implemented the parking fee. It was very interesting to learn through this process that the parking fee at Meldrum Bar Park charging outside visitors for youth sports was the biggest concern. And essentially what the unified group came to the conclusion is that they want to subsidize youth sports in Gladstone by not making them pay a parking fee if they are not a resident. So with that information, if any of the counselors that were on the subcommittee wanna offer any more insights, I really, we just wanted to open it up for a conversation because we intend on bringing this back to the city council at your April meeting and would need to do a resolution to amend the master fee schedule. All right, Councilor Alexander, you were part of the subcommittee. Yeah, so I got in the last few days, I got on and I talked to uh, Oregon City, Happy Valley, Westland, Lake Oswego and Canby about how, how they do theirs. And uh, they all do it different, you know, way they, they charge for the field, they charge $2 extra the lights need at night. They you do user fees and everything, but um, all of them agree. They'd never charge another team to come, come watch their kids play. So I think the idea that Chief Smerber had of making that parking area down there on the right is, is great. And it helps everybody. Everybody seems happy. We get money from the sports people and the, the uh, visiting teams get to park for free and watch their children play. So that's that's what I came up with. That's how I feel, and that's how most of the other cities feel too. That they would they would never do that or implement that. So that's all I got. Great, thank you, Councilor Hartman. Sorry about that, um, I have I have nothing more to add. Um, I also did uh, research Davis Councilor Alexander, and it was. A same across the board. Um, and I think going through the conversations that we had with everyone, everyone did seem to come together on that this was a, a great solution that we could be in the middle and still the city is um, getting fees and, and income for the use of the field, but also being mindful that these nonprofit organizations are allowing the incoming teams to um, have a space to park. Um, so yeah, I thank you. Councillor Todd. Yeah, it, that was really all that came of the entire thing. I understand 
that this really puts a hit to the budget that was expected to go towards the parks. And um, I think all the sports teams were aware of that as well, but it was their biggest concern. They really didn't care about, you know, pl playing fees and field, you know, how many, how many dollars would go per registered um, player that they didn't care about. What they really cared about was having um, free parking for all those other teams that came in. A lot of them, it's not even going to be that much. Sometimes um, with soccer, they, they were saying, you know, they might play another team three times or something like that, that might come in. So it's not a huge amount of money, but it seemed to be something that everybody could come together with. And I think Chief Schmerber's idea was excellent about having a, a parking place. It was, it was really nice. So there's nothing else to really say. Thank you. How many outreach meetings did we have? Just wanna make sure that it's on the record so people know that we actually went out and met with people more than just once. You mean with the subcommittee? Yes. Oh, we had two meetings with the subcommittee and a third with just the elected officials and the parks and rec board members to make sure that staff understood what uh, the consensus was before we went back to the user group. So there was three total. Two of them were with the sports user groups. And we had really good participation from the user groups. Yes. They okay. all they all were very vocal and even what you'll find from the first meeting is the children's course was there, even though they're not technically a sports user on one of our fields, but the conversation there was representation from all of the groups. All right, so I'm going to go around and ask people if they've got questions. Um, Councilor Alexander, you're at the top of my, you're at the top. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it was great. Um, Councillor Hartman and Councillor Todd were there and they it was a great idea from Chief Schmerber and everybody seemed happy with the outcome. So I like to stick with that. Councillor Garlington. So I just have a couple of things. Um, I was of course part of the parks board when the parking fee was implemented for non-residents in Gladstone. And the reason that we did that, I'm not sure where the verbiage when we talk about that got changed, but that was to go towards uh, um, projects at the parks, not back into general public works money. Um, one of the things that I did this last week is I uh, talked to people on the street, people in the park, anybody walking down the street and ask them, would they consider paying extra money on their water bill every month to uh, pay for that park fee, you know, that we're not gonna generate that money. And everybody but three people said, nope, they didn't want to. And they would like to see the that everybody that doesn't live in Gladstone pay that fee to go into the park. So there, I'm just throwing that out there. And then the other thing is, is, you know, when you talk about not generating that income from the sports user fees, and then we're talking about, we could possibly generate 13,000 to $15,000 a year, or yeah, a year, I'm assuming season, well, maybe we should talk about putting that money into capital improvements for parks rather than putting it back into general fund, which has already been budgeted for the public works and parks department through 2023. So those are the things that uh, caught my eye and I wanted to share with everyone. Um, that's all, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Hartman. I have nothing more to add. Thank you. Councilor Tracy. No questions, thanks. Councilor Ripley. Uh, no questions. Councilor Todd. Um, I think Councilor Garlington's idea is stellar of having those user fees go back into specifically projects for the parks because that's what it's 
originally the other ones were supposed to be used for. And I do understand that we are losing that, you know, money coming in that we assumed we would have. So I think that's a great idea and I'd be on board for that. All right, thank you. Um, my only concerns, I guess, and questions is, how much do we think we're going to lose in revenue from the parking, from implementing this? And also, um, there was a lot of work that went into the parking fees down there, a lot of work. And the public was part of the decision that they wanted the people that didn't live in Gladstone to pay, help us pay for our parks. Our parks are drastically underfunded. We need money for our parks. And if everyone's gonna chip away at our one revenue stream, then we're gonna to have to come to the table soon, sooner rather than later, come up with some other funding options. Because, I mean, it's gonna to get to the point where they're gonna to have to steal from other funds again, and they can't do that, it's illegal. So we have to um, care for our parks since that is one, is the, one of the biggest draws that we have in our city. Um, that's all that I have to say, Councilor Alexander. Yeah, and like when I was talking to a bunch of these people, um, there's a difference, and I don't know how the rest of the councilors feel, but you, you've got the kiosk there, you do pay to use the park. And that's right, if you're gonna go in and use a park, if you're gonna go in and park and watch your child play a softball, a baseball, or a soccer game, and then you're gonna get in your car and leave. It's just, I just don't think that's right. They didn't think it was right either. I mean, if they're gonna use the park, go in and park and get out and use the facility, that's one thing. But just to, uh, just to, it's sort of like a ransom, you know? So I gotta to pay to watch my kid play Gladstone, but no other city. That's, that was a feedback I was getting. So I think Chief Schmerber had a great idea. So that's what I'd keep it at. Thanks. All right, anything else from staff? Just as I make notes, when we bring this back to you in April, we can try to do an estimate of the lost revenue. It's really difficult to do that because we're not sure yet how many visitor teams will be playing at the park. I also wanted to keep in mind that when we implemented the parking fee, we estimated approximately $250,000 a year in revenue. And that was before we decided not to charge the residents, which we all believe that was the right thing to do. So we've already overestimated the revenue that is going to come in. The funds that the user fees will generate will help go into that revenue. So they will go towards specific parts projects. But I think when we come back in April, we will try to give an estimate of the loss of revenue if we don't have the parking fee. And also wanted to just let the council know that as of the end of January, we were still in the rears with our parking fee paying off what we have invested in the equipment into it about $15,000 um, that we are still under budget on that. So we can definitely bring back uh, some of the fiscal impacts if you wanna see that at the April meeting. Um, otherwise, I believe since it is a master fee schedule that the sports user groups will be invited to speak if there is public comments on that. And is there anything else you guys would like more information on when we bring this back? When did the kiosk go live? I think it was June 2021. Okay. Okay. Um, Councilor Hartman had her hand up. I just wanted to make a comment too. I think um, we can also be mindful with the uh, Clackamas Park boat ramp closing indefinitely that we could see quite a pickup now that we're a closer boat ramp, you know, than we have, you know, traditionally seen with their boat ramp being closed. So that might be a positive thing um, to anticipate. I just wanted to throw that out there. Councilor Garlington. So when people, when we first put in the, the kiosk and then people went down and bought the year passes, was that from the date that you bought it or was that like, 2021 and then they'd have to come back in 2022 and buy another one. I believe it's the date that they bought it. Okay. And then the other thing is, do you, because when I was walking around talking to people, they asked, are, is the police station 
handing out tickets for people not paying yet? And is there a revenue there? I'm sure you're going to have to ask about that, right? I'm not trying to put you on the no, spot. No, and okay. these are good. This is why I said if there's more information. So you would like to know a little bit about the parking enforcement piece? Yes. Okay. I was told that the parking enforcement piece, those funds were not going to come to parks. That was going to stay with the police department. That is correct because yeah. the state has uh, statutes that if you're being cited, it goes through court, it's got to go to different funds. So that cannot be counted on as revenue for the parks fund. I, I guess I was more uh, questioning whether or not they were actually doing it. I figured that money was locked up. It is also in the staff report, but I wanted to publicly say for the record that the children's course did ask for parking placards for parents that are waiting to pick up their children that are having golf lessons. Even though we did reiterate that it's okay for you to drop off and pick up and not have to get a parking pass. I don't know how many they're going to request, but I can't imagine that it wouldn't be maybe more than four or five. And we're paying, we're paying for those placards. They're not going to be paying for them or we're absorbing the cost. We would just print them at the same time. Yes. Okay. Councilor Garlington. I just want to say that I have been one of those parents that have sat down there with golf lessons for my grandson and most of the parents stay. All right. Anything else from council or staff? Because this is the only thing on our agenda tonight. I don't see anything. So then we can adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Motion was made by Councilor Garlington and seconded by Councilor Hartman to adjourn the meeting. Do we have any further discussion? I don't see any hands. Tammy, could you do a roll call vote, please? Councilor Garlington. Yes. Councilor Todd. Yes. Councilor Hartman. Aye. Councilor Tracy. Aye. Councilor Alexander. Yes. Councilor Ripley. Yes. Mayor Stemple. Yes. Meeting is adjourned at 5.52 p.m. Thank you, everybody, and have a good Tuesday.